at Ammons. Space this is camp, our sorry. Space camp training floor. <laughs> this is where all of the students who come to space camp have their missions to outer space. So you can see that around us we have created an environment here that simulates the different kinds of activities a student might do if they were part of a mission to space. Over here where you see where you're pointing right now is our Mars habitat. So in that scenario we would have students who would be flying to Mars aboard our Orion simulator right here. They would be among the first people to step foot on the surface of the Martian soil and they would have a base camp where they would set up to do experiments, to learn about the Martian environment, and to be part of that pioneering journey to another planet for the very first time. We other also have, over here, we have a simulation of our International of modules here in which our students would be flying to the International Space Station for a variety of reasons. In one case, our, our astronauts would have to step out for what is called an EVA in, space, in the space world. It's an extravehicular activity, what most folks call a spacewalk. They would be stepping out to make a repair on an ammonium tank to save the crew from imminent disaster. <laughs> so this is a way that we have been teaching Space Camp for a very long time now. We've been doing this work for 38 years. We have close to a million graduates who've gone through our program. Oh, wow. And what they're learning here is the importance of space travel, about space exploration, what it has brought to our communities around, to our, to our world. Uh, the very device that you are using right now to record me is a direct result Oh, that's so awesome. The microchip was invented as part of the space program, which enables us to develop the, the smartphones that we use today and the smartphone technology as a result of the satellites that we have flying above us in the atmosphere. So cool. Atmosphere. I didn't even know they were connected. They're all connected. <laughs> it's very hard to find a connection to anything on Earth today that particularly the advanced technologies that we have on Earth today that aren't part of to space exploration. So our students are here to learn about that, to learn about how space exploration has changed our world. They're also here to learn how they can be part of it. A lot of children come to us and they want to be astronauts. But when they get here, they learn things about space exploration that may show them that being an astronaut isn't perhaps what they want to do, but they find out ways that they can be involved. Uh, maybe they're going to be the engineer who builds the next great ship to take us back into outer space and on into beyond Mars. Maybe they're going to be part of mission control where they are communicating with the astronauts that are aboard either the International Space Station or maybe going back to the moon. Perhaps they are going to be a geologist who is going to help, help predict the soils on which we're going to find on other planets. Maybe they're going to be the astronomers who are going to give us more information about the stars we could potentially go to see one day. So there's just many things that our students learn here. We have changed lives for, ch for children around the world. And uh, this is not a typical summer for us because we, uh, at this time of day on a weekday afternoon in the middle of summer, we would be crawling with children. We'd have a thousand children a week here right now. It's very quiet right now. We are still on hiatus with our program. We plan to start up at the end of June. And with that, we will have a far fewer number than we would typically have. So our team has been trying to figure out a way to take that great team spirit, camaraderie, um, the, the emphasis on working together and figure out a way to do it six feet apart so that we can keep all of our students yeah. safe as we deal with uh, this unprecedented yeah. virus. Almost 150 countries from which we've had students attend space camp. How many um, did you say? We've had close to a million graduates. We've had more than, I think best way to say this, we've had more than 900,000 graduates who have attended some form of our program. And some of, we have four different programs. We have Space Camp, we have Aviation Challenge, which is a jet fighter training program. We also have Robotics Camp, and then we have Cyber Camp, which is our newest program. Because our, really what we're doing here at Space Camp 
is honestly thinly veiled workforce development because we are training sure. the future engineers and sciences and explorers. And so we've heard from so many people in the industry that the next frontier really is cyber. And so we are training, uh, it's a new program, we've had it for about two years or so. We are basing it on the model that we have developed Space Camp with. And it is uh, the same sort of team-based activities but with the idea of being a cyber warrior okay. instead of a space explorer. Oh, that's so, great. Yes. So it's been a superpower. Absolutely. <laughs> and we've had tremendous response from industry. We're very interested in this program and want to support that because it's going to be such it's going to be a very important part of our future. Well, cybersecurity is like one of the top absolutely. degrees you could get right now. Absolutely. So, yeah, so for sure. We are Smart. We're starting on <laughs> and getting them interested and engaged because we found that when expose children to a concept and an idea and the path to get there when they're young, it's an extremely successful form of education. And you'll notice uh, uh, the clarity that they are They all are women. all women. Are Yay. All women. We've had, um, you know, I, I've heard from some of our female our graduates who said that Space Camp was a place that they were able to realize their own abilities without some of the structure of a classroom yeah. that sometimes, particularly in the past, has favored male yeah. energy, perhaps, yes. in some ways, more than, yes. uh, more than uh, girls. And so they have been able to really realize their dreams. Right here we have a, a microbiologist and a physician and a geologist and an Air Force captain and an engineer Another thing that telling our students is that you don't major in astronaut. You major in a field that can be related to space exploration, but it is not how you don't right. You don't start college and say I'm going to be an astronaut. You find the thing that you're good at and that you're passionate about, and that can translate to becoming an astronaut. Yeah. If you're one of the very few lucky ones who get to do that, and if that's what you need to be. Yes. You're, uh, you're looking at Christina Cook right now. She was a five-time space, uh, uh, space Camp graduate. She just completed the longest duration space flight by a woman, and she also took part in the first all-female space flight. So she is quite the rock star astronaut. Here we are in Rocket Park. So right now, we do have some areas that are not open due to the proximity that it would place for people. Like our Kids Cosmos area here, which is our playground for I mean, space themed playground for younger children, is not open at the moment. That will be a part of a later phased opening this summer. So we started out somewhat small as we re reopened, and we're adding as we get more comfortable with the process and also based on the state yeah. health orders, we are opening things gradually with so the new guidelines with the sure. new guidelines sure. and so that we can stay uh, safe for our visitors okay so right here you're looking at a Saturn one uh, these are we have a series of different rockets that it that explores the different eras of space exploration we have no models on our property other than our giant Saturn 5 vertical model is the only model that we have here it, everything else was part of the program in some capacity. It was either a test article, it might have been a surplus, it might have been a prototype. There's many things that it could have been. Uh, but that's one of the great things about this facility is that this is so authentic. What you're seeing here is authentic. And that Saturn V, the great vertical, which is an icon yes. <laughs> of our city here in the City, uh, is, is a replica, but it's a full-size replica, so you get to see the extraordinary height of that rocket. And then when you go inside the Davidson Center for Space Exploration, which we'll do in a moment, you'll see the National Historic Landmark Saturn V, so you get to see it above your head in a horizontal way, but then when you, so it's just a wonderful uh, yeah. juxtaposition yeah. seeing it vertically. Yeah. Is, uh, we have a new mining sluice open so that people can uh, imagine what it might be like to be a geologist on that uh, future planet where they can be um, seeking minerals 
uh, that can be perhaps used back here. On oh, the that's so course. cool. So this is brand new. We just got this oh, there, finished. It looks like when you were doing the gold rush. Yes, <laughs> very similar. So bringing uh, the future and the past together. So this is something that we just got and are excited to have. Ms. Ammons took me for a walk around the campus and showed me the G-Force accelerator simulators and these rides looked super cool. I know a few kids that really would be excited to take them, just not this kid. How long is Space Camp? Is it a week? It is a week. Uh, they check in on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, and settle in and uh, stay here all week long. It is a sleep away program that includes all their meals. Um, they will, uh, all their meals, all their tuition, all their activities, and then they graduate Friday. And uh, oftentimes we'll see them again and again throughout their childhood. We have an underwater astronaut trainer that is used in our advanced uh, space camp program, and the Tom Hanks and the rest of the folks from the Apollo 13 movie did a lot of their training for that movie for the um, weightlessness that they experienced in our underwater astronauts. Oh, that's so super cool! So currently, our National Geographic Theater and our planetarium are not open because of the uh, proximity issues related to the virus. But we do plan on bringing those back online uh, as a gradual part of our three-step process of reopening. We hope to be opening our Friday night programs in our planetarium very soon. We have a state-of-the-art AK Digital Laser Theater in our planetarium that is absolutely stunning. And we can't wait to get that back online because it is truly an amazing experience. Where you when was the planetarium uh, made? We, for, when, it re, when it opened originally, it was an IMAX theater. And it was an, a very popular IMAX theater for a very long time. But of course, IMAX technology is very difficult to come by these days. We have completely redone that theater with uh, the help of intuitive research and technology, and it is now a state-of-the-art planetarium that makes you feel like you were literally sitting in the middle of outer space. And we have an amazing planetarium staff that is developing original content for our visitors to see when they come to visit us and have that experience. That's so super cool. The German connection is one that we have a very strong connection with here because there was the the rocket team by led by Warner Ron Brown, of course, who moved to Huntsville in 1950 and uh, originally as part of the Army program to build missiles for the defense of the United States and that same technology is what transferred and, uh, to uh, space exploration. The same kind of technology that we're sending missiles were the same kind that they redeveloped into rocket technology. And, and he he really was about education too, right? Like he... he very much so. Education was such a critical thing for Dr. Von Brown, and also making sure that people were aware of the work that had been done here in this community. It was Dr. Von Brown who petitioned the state legislature for the uh, to open this museum to begin with. He said it's important that people realize what the people of Alabama did to put man on the moon and to continue with space exploration through the propulsion office that developed the propulsion work for the suit today, which Marshall Space Flight Center, of which we are the official visitor center, is now working on the space launch system, which is the next big vehicle that's gonna take us back to the moon and onto Mars. So it is very much part of the history of this community and one that uh, the German team came here and worked with American engineers and created the most powerful 
rocket ever made to this point to take us to the moon. And we'll see that in just a second. Okay. But I do want to show something to you as we're walking up these steps. Okay. This, I think, is really a neat part of our story here. This is a original, this is the actual airplane that was patented in 1908 by a local inventor whose name is William Lafayette Rick. This gentleman was quite the inventor of all sorts of things, but he was caught up in the whole idea of learning to fly and how do we, how do we fly? The same as a contemporary of the Wright brothers. So his vehicle was quite, as you can see, influenced by bats and birds. It's not very hard to yes. see what influence was here. <laughs> but he had an upright pilot and he had an engine. So in some ways his technology was certainly compatible, if not even more advanced than the Wright brothers. He did get this vehicle off the ground, but engineering um, was off just a bit. It was a little too heavy and it crashed pretty quickly after takeoff. <laughs> uh, his son, the pilot, did break his leg, but I think recovered quite nicely. So the family gave this plane to the Rocket Center and then we've had it on display since this building opened in 2008. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. But what I think is really interesting about this is if you look at this and you think about 1908, we were very just beginning to understand the rudimentary aspects of flight. And if you keep that in mind, as we round this corner and look at the National Historic Landmark Saturn V rocket, it is only 61 years later that we landed on the moon. Yeah. Now that's not very long. No. And so this is sort of the gasp-worthy moment. Oh, yeah. When you walk around the corner and you see this magnificent vehicle. This is the dynamic test article. So this was the actual vehicle that they used to test these five F1 engines here on Marshall Space Flight Center grounds. Do you guys see the scale of this? There's a little group <laughs> down it's below. Massive. <laughs> How massive this is. It's pretty wild. <laughs> And how long it goes. <laughs> it's, it's as long as an American football field. American football field. Or longer, actually. An American wow. football field. Wow. So this vehicle was part of Morgan Center since its opening in 1970. It was outside for a very long time. Of course, uh, that wasn't very good for it um, to be in the elements. So there was a money raised to bring it inside and build this building so that we can showcase it yeah. where it is today. Yeah, wow. But again, continuing with education Absolutely. and keeping things for history so that we can learn. Absolutely. Learn. 61 years later, from learning how to fly to landing on the moon, what else can't we accomplish? Right. So, yeah. so what also I think is really fascinating about our collection, we have the largest collection of American hardware, space hardware, this right here is a procedure simulator that John Glenn would have used to train for his flight. So if you want to come and look inside, you can see what a tiny little tin can of a vehicle this was. And this is what he, uh, this is similar in size to what he would have launched into space for that first, um, first orbit around. We are doing time tickets this summer just to, so that we can maintain the number of people coming sure. in at a time. You still have every opportunity to come and learn about the history of our city here, how how Huntsville became the Rocket City, and how we are still involved in space exploration today. Now, this is uh, an often time by stories about how they were involved in this program. So and some of them live locally? Yes. How many, cool many, many of them. Many. So, uh, as a matter of fact, the, the last of the Germans died about two years ago. He was 104. The last of the original Germans died about two years ago. He was 104 years old. This is a fascinating exhibit over here. This is the brains of the Saturn V. And so you can see that uh, it was a fairly simple compared to today's technology that actually trigger each of these stages to do what is next. So we've had a lot of movies and a lot of things filmed here. The sound mixer for um, First Man, the movie that uh, 
explore the story of Neil Armstrong, the first first person to set foot on the moon, the sound mixer from Uni uh, Universal Studios came here to get a lot of the authentic sound from Apollo equipment to use in that movie. And he was nominated for his ninth Academy Award for that. That is or, awesome. Unfortunately, he did not win. The vehicle over here, which has a lot of the original uh, Apollo switches and things in, that he used that to create the sound rather than creating something in the studio. He used authentic sound for that movie. out how to drive a vehicle on the surface of the moon so that the astronauts could go farther and collect more materials. Oh, wow. The COVID-19 virus has been, um, like for so many places, it's been devastating for us here at the Rocket Center. We closed on March 13th and just reopened last week for, and even with that, with limited admission. And when we start back our program for Space Camp, it will be with far reduced numbers. And we are at a really critical time for this amazing institution, and we are uh, really hoping for support from our community, both those who have come and those who want to come. Um, we are raising money to try to help sustain us through this difficult time and to make up for some of the enormous losses that we've had through the shutdown. So if anyone would like to help us maintain this amazing facility that has and will continue to share the story, the amazing stories of space exploration, please visit us at rocketcenter.com and follow the link to help us with our failure is not an option campaign. And that's a phrase that was used during the Apollo 13 mission when things went terribly wrong and uh, a team of people worked together to bring those astronauts safely back. And we are hoping that with the help of many people from around the world, that this institution will continue to be able to do the great work that we do. We're in time for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo, I think. So it uh, was erected in 1999 for the 30th anniversary. So after 20 years, it needed a little replacement. Uh, so we did that last year, and we are so proud of the way it turned out. And it's such a great representation of the work that's done here in Hudson. It's so bright and shiny. <laughs> and we couldn't have done it without the support of a lot of donors from around the world, many of our space camp students and families. This is our next big project with the world. Painted the Saturn V and the Saturn V. We've got our historic rocket stand, they being repainted. Our shuttle project was going to be uh, forthcoming, but it is on hold now as well. Financial challenges. This is not something we can tackle right now. But what you're seeing here is the only full shuttle stack in the entire world. So you have an actual external fuel tank, solid rocket boosters, and the vehicle that you see here is not one that was ever intended to fly. It was a test article uh, for weight and that sort of thing. It was originally not even composed to look like an actual shuttle. But it was, uh, after it went on a tour of Japan, it came back and, uh, during, for that tour of Japan, it was recreated to look like a shuttle. And then it returned here, and this was installed here on this property in 1989. So you can see that the space shuttle, which was of course a vehicle that was designed to fly into space, to launch into space, and then come back safely with its astronauts, which it did almost always, except for two tragic uh, exceptions. It was an amazing vehicle that accomplished a lot. It was upon this vehicle that the components of the International Space Station were taken to space, and many other things were done over its 30-year mission. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Ms. Ammons of the Space and Rocket Center home of Space Camp and consider being a part of this most amazing place in our history as well as Alabama history. Thanks for being a part of Travel with Wendy. Hi, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I have much more content on my website, travelwithwendy.net, and you can also support this channel by becoming a Patreon patron. The links are below.
Remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy.